prisoner of war, held in an internment camp in Singapore. Today, Father Hugh Thwaites is a Jesuit priest who wrote a letter to Bishop Zarnich, curious as to the official church position on Medjugorje. Bishop Zarnich replied with a letter stating that these so-called visions are the fruit of fabrication, fraud and disobedience to the church. I was delighted, I was thrilled. And uh, I thought, this is what I've been wanting, this is what I, just what I wanted. And uh, it was such an important document, I wanted to have it photocopied, you see, and uh, reproduced. I think I didn't even entrust it to the post. I thought it might get lost on the post or the devil might do something. No, I, I was delighted. It was really just what the church needed, I thought. Something authoritative from the only person in the world who would give an authoritative judgment, namely the local bishop. In his letter, Bishop Zarnich also asked that Father Thwaites publish his declaration, which was included in the envelope. He said it was a fraud. The kids lied to him repeatedly until finally he said, this cannot be the Blessed Mother. And uh, the statement in 87 was, you know, saying, the sign that you promised has appeared. It's the silence. You're not here. And he said, people who put uh, words in the mouth of the Blessed Mother deserve the lowest part of hell. Extreme strong statement. And that was followed then by the bishop's statement saying that there was nothing supernatural. So he's never, he's never... I mean, I sure, a bishop would love to have the Blessed Mother appear in his diocese, but he never changed his mind. He was always cautious. This official statement from Bishop Zarnich accuses the Franciscans of hurrying forward before the church's judgment. It also draws attention to prohibited preached private revelations. On the 23rd of May, 1985, the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith sent to the Italian Bishops' Conference a letter asking bishops to make efforts to reduce organized pilgrimages from Italy to Medjugorje. However, despite all of this, a multitude of promoters at Medjugorje ignore the authority of the Catholic Church, along with the thousands of pilgrims that converge on Medjugorje each year, although many pilgrims are not aware of this. Maybe they didn't know what the bishop had said, but I think that many people don't realize the authority that God has given a bishop. A bishop does govern his area uh, with a divine authority. And it's very dangerous to uh, go against one's bishop. It was very difficult in times of heresy uh, in England at the time of the Reformation. But uh, the bishop there, he is in full communion with the Holy Father and he enjoys Rome's approval, and so he has to be obeyed. And I, I will, I'd be very frightened to disobey a bishop. If people snap their fingers at the decisions of the bishops, well, that's their problem. How Catholic are they? The people of God, from the time of Moses onwards, have been the people who have obeyed the legitimate authority set over them by God. They are being misled by the Franciscans. What way? Well, the only reason they're coming here as opposed... ...scratched negative, or else a 50-foot woman. Some people have other theories about the alleged signs at Medjugorje. Just as one whiff of crack can give some people a cocaine addiction for life, so one touch a spiritual consolation of demonic origin can give some people an undying craving for more of the same. After my experiences here now, especially talking to some of the people who have had some intimate contact with this, these people are telling me that there, there is a definite occult element involved in Medjugorje, that the kids are seeing something, that they are getting messages, and the messages are occult. They're compatible with the occult. The first message that uh, appeared after the Yugoslavian bishops made their statement, the Blessed Mother said, you have to turn positives into negatives. And then this one person here opens the book, and there it is, one of these occult books, and 
right there. The chapter heading is called Turning Positives into Negatives. Now, this guy said the Blessed Mother never, never uses vocabulary like this in the Bible. This is all New Age occult vocabulary. I was talking to one priest, and he talks about uh, his experiences with the New Age movement here. He's, a, he's uh, uh, collected a whole library of New Age books that people have brought here. And the whole point of the New Age movement is to create another Jesus another Jesus. In other words, a Jesus that's compatible with the way we want him to be, rather than us being compatible with the way he wants us to be. And there's always a danger of this other Jesus, and that's a, it's a very real danger here. St. John of the Cross warns us strongly against spiritual gluttony. He says that we should try to resist spiritual sweetness, and never on any account seek it. If it comes from God, then, as soon as we're aware of it, we have already received the grace he intends to give us. God is not displeased when, on receiving his gifts, we at once turn away from the gift to regard the giver. He wants us to serve him out of love and not as mercenaries. I think this is the devil's strategy when it comes to Medjugorje. In other words, put the people in a situation where they, come, they become so attached to this drug that they will choose the drug over the Catholic Church founded by Jesus Christ to guide them to heaven. And that, if the devil can do that, he's won. So, just as mothers warn their children against experimenting with drugs, so Holy Mother Church warns us against all apparitions and messages that, not have, been, that have not been authenticated by the Church. They may prove to be of demonic origin, and healing them may lead to spiritual addiction. We Catholics have to be satisfied to live our life here in the darkness of faith. If we see a light that does not emanate from Rome, we should turn away from it. We should not forget our mother's oft-repeated warning, never take sweets from strangers, never go along with strangers, never even listen to strangers. All you will ever need to have, all you will ever need to know, you will get from your mother, from me, who am the bride of Christ. So, really, is the story of Little Red Riding Hood all over again, but lived out in a world of spirits. Or perhaps I should more appropriately say, is the story of Adam and Eve. Good people, guileless people, wanted to know more than they should. I think that's it. Great danger. Great danger. Within a few years of Lourdes, I read somewhere there were 60 different apparitions of Our Lady in France, all of them demonic. One of the things I find very striking is, is that, um, uh, going back to the apparitions at Lourdes, which were approved by the church, that um, St. Bernadette's brother took a small toy from a pilgrim who was visiting Lourdes. And in fact, she was so horrified that he had actually made some gain, and, he, and she asked him to return the toy. And when you actually compare that to the lifestyles of the seers who were brought up in Medjugorje, who are now incredibly wealthy, even by Bosnian standards, um, it doesn't tie in at all with, with you know, um, what has happened with genuine seers. In As for the charismatic movement, people tell me, ah, it's just the Franciscans against the seculars. I say, no. It's always been a case of charismatics versus the rest. And as for charismatics, I remember I wrote to Frank Duff. Now, he founded the Legion of Mary a most experienced man. He got a standing ovation when he entered the hall at Vatican II. Uh, I wrote to him saying that the Legion of Mary, this was 30 years ago, the Legion of Mary in, in the West Indies or some of the islands was very strongly charismatic. And I thought this was harmful. And he wrote back, I've got the letter still. He wrote back saying that in his opinion, the charismatic renewal movement was one of the most dangerous things in the church today. I think they saw a window of opportunity. I think that uh, I think that there were lots of reasons that they would latch on to something like this. The main the main one being their battle with the bishop to retain control over these parishes. Medjugorje falls under the diocese.